Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of the Mastering FreeCAD series. Now these episodes complement the Learning FreeCAD series and what we're doing is taking what we've learned and putting that into practice into something that's a bit more in depth. So in this episode we're carrying on from previous video and looking at the link tool. And we're going to look at creating a multi-file project where a spreadsheet is shared across multiple parts. So these two parts are using a single spreadsheet. We also created a document project. Within here, we have a simple technical drawing. We have the finished parts, and we also have the spreadsheet as well. So this spreadsheet can control the other parts as well as the spreadsheet in our master slash resource file or the spreadsheet within our part itself. These are all linked files. So I'm gonna show you a way of organizing your project and having that flexibility with having parts in separate files, your documents in another, and say your assembly in another one. So I hope you enjoy this series. The other Learning Free CAD series is still running and this is just to complement that. So let's have a look at this workflow. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So in FreeCAD, we started a new document. First thing I'm going to do is actually save this straight away. So come out to File, Save. And what we're going to do is create a new folder. And this is going to be our project folder. So we're going to call this Project X. And we come into here. This is going to be basically where we're going to place the spreadsheet and other resource files. So this is going to be our master file. So just going to type in master file in here and save that. So in our master file, we're going to have a spreadsheet. So we come into the spreadsheet workbench and we're going to create a simple spreadsheet in here. We come to spreadsheets, create spreadsheet or use the icon on the toolbar here. And we're going to add some dimensions in here. So I'm going to add, let's just go for length for the time being. So length, and we're going to set this to 50. So this is the dimension we're going to be sharing across files or the spreadsheet we're going to be sharing across files. Let's rename that spreadsheet and call this something like dimensions spreadsheet. We've got our spreadsheet. I have an alias like this field. We can do that if we want, but we're just showing you the technique first before we get into a more complex project. I'm going to save this. File save or control S and we saved our spreadsheet off. So let's create a new document now. Now let's say this is our part that we're using. I'm going to create a very simple part and this is just going to be a cube just to get the idea across. Go into the part workbench and create a cube. We could create this in the part design draft wherever you want to create this. And we click on the cube and what we're going to do is link up the length to the spreadsheet. At the moment, we haven't got the spreadsheet in here. We don't create a new one. We can just link this into the file. First of all, we have to save this. So save as, and we're gonna save it into the same project file. And I'm gonna call this part A and save it. So to link the spreadsheet into here, all we have to do is come into the master file Click on the dimension spreadsheet, hold down the alt on the keyboard and drag this into part A. So we've now got this spreadsheet in part A. The other way to do it, I'm just going to hit delete on that and come back into the master file, is to select the spreadsheet from the tree view, come down to the tabs, click on part A, and then use the link to make link. And that's pulled that dimension spreadsheet in. So we've got the spreadsheet in with the cube. 
And what we can do now is actually use this spreadsheet that's been linked in to control the cube or to control our part. So the only one we've got in here at the moment is the length. So let's click on the cube. We're still in the part A file and we'll come down to length and use the formula. And in here, if we start typing dimensions, you see the spreadsheet has come up, this spreadsheet here. And if I type in spreadsheet, you'll see that will still come up. So this is the file that's been linked in. Click on the spreadsheet and we've created a link to that spreadsheet. So all we have to do is find out the cell, which I believe is a two. Let's try a one, which shows us the length there. And a two is the value, so 50. And hit OK. Click off and our cube has changed in length. If we change the master file and change the spreadsheet within here to say two and click off, what we'll find if we come back to our part, we get a tick by the spreadsheet. Let's click on the part. You can see, well, it hasn't taken effect yet. But if I click on this spreadsheet, you can see the length is in here. So the tick means that we need to recompute. So we come up to edit and refresh, and that's changed in size. If I save part A now, it will say that I've got dependencies, and all I have to do is hit yes to save that across. I use control S to save. If I close this now, close all, and let's say I came into my spreadsheet, which was the master file, I've got the spreadsheet in here, and let's change this to say 100. And we save this. Then what happens to the file underneath? Well, let's close all. File, recent files, part A. And you can see that there's a tick by the spreadsheet here. If I click on it, we've got a length in here. This means that it needs refreshing and it hasn't taken effect yet, but you can see the value has pulled in. So the cube is still the same size, two millimeters, but if we go edit, refresh on that file, anything that needs changing will be updated in there. You notice also the master file has opened up. Now, the good thing about this technique is that we can bring in, say, this file, so the items within this file into another file, so we could have our resources in one file and then say our documentation, our technical drawings, our assembly in another file. So at the moment, we've only got one part. Let's create another part. So let's create another file. And what we'll do is save that and call this part B. And let's place a cylinder in this one. So I'm gonna place a cylinder in this one. And we're going to use the same length, but we're going to add that to the height. We can't do this as of yet because, well, we haven't got the spreadsheet in there. So click on the spreadsheet, hold down Alt and drag that into part B. Now I can click on the cylinder. The height will change with the formula. And we want dimension spreadsheet. And it was a one I believe, no A2, there we go, and OK that. Click off, that's applied. So now we've got that spreadsheet shared across two files. So if I come into any of these, let's come into part B and set this to 10, hit enter. We'll have a look at part B. Need to refresh in. Now my operating system is control R, so I've refreshed that. Let's come up to part A. You can see it needs refreshing here. So we do the same, refresh that. And our master file, you can see it's 10. So that's been modified in the B file, part B, and shared across all the others. So the changes can come from the origin of the spreadsheet or from any of the files that's been included in there. One thing that we have to be careful of is sharing this back to the master file. So if we made a link to say, part B, and let's say we wanted to use the master file to create a technical drawing, have our technical drawing in the master file, 
then we could say, click the cylinder, hold down Alt and drop a link into the master file. But we get a circular link then. So if I hit Control S, you can see we've got down here that the graph must be a DAG. If I come up to file and save all, you see we've got the cyclic dependencies in here. And that's because we've created link from the spreadsheet to part B and then the cylinder uses the spreadsheet and then we create a link from the cylinder back to the master file. So what happens is that we make a change in here, it hits the cylinder and then the cylinder refreshes the link back in the master file goes, the cylinder is refreshed, so I need to refresh. And we get this problem because it's gone from here down, refreshed back up and it's a complete circle. So that causes a bit of an issue when we try to save all because one modifies, then the master file is modified, so that's saved. Because the master file is modified, then all the childs are modified, and then that's saved. And then part B, well, we've got the child is modified in here, which is linked back to the master. And well, you can see what I'm talking about. We get this circular link. So if we're going to do that and have, say, an overall file with the documentation, the spreadsheet, and text files, etc., that ties our project into some kind of document, then what we need to do is basically create a file with all links going across that if we wanted to do that. So that's called this one, our like document. And this is gonna hold such things as technical drawings, our spreadsheet, so we can look at the spreadsheet, etc. So what we can do now is go to the master file. So this could be called something like resource file. So this master file is actually a resource file with our spreadsheets and different items in there. We could have multiple spreadsheets in here, or we could have this spreadsheet in one of the parts. It's up to you how you want to set this up. What I can do now is take the spreadsheet, hold down Alt, make a link to the document. So that's inside the document. And that's take, say, part A, and pull in a link to the document in here. So we've got that one in there. And we can take part B as well and pull in a link to that cylinder into there. So we've got cube and the cylinder in there. So we've got those in there. And we can make technical drawings from these and just click on these and hide them or come in, right click, create a group and take both of these Control selecting those and drag those into the group so they're hidden away in here. And we can use these to create such things as a technical drawing. But we have to be careful because if I create a technical drawing against this link, then if something changes in part B, so this is our end result. Let's pretend that this is our end result. If we add something in here, let's add a sphere and Let's click that and control click the cylinder and cut those away. Well, this is our end result now, which is cut. But we've pulled the link back to our document, which we want to make a technical drawing of, of the cylinder, which is no good to us. We want that end result. And if we look at the cut, we can see, well, the cylinder's in here, so that's what we've linked. How do we get around that? Because what we would have to do is basically take the link and point it to the cut rather than the cylinder. Well, this is where parts and bodies come in. So a part container. If you're doing a part workflow or any other workflow, we've got this item here, which is create part. If you're doing such a thing as a part design, we don't use this because the part design has a body. So let's go back to the model and come back into our document. And what I'm going to do is take these two in here and delete them. We don't want that link. Leave the group there. Let's modify these. So we've got the cut in part B. Got the cut in here. I'm going to add the crate part. So this is just a container that we can place these in. I can drop that cut into the part. 
See the part is bold. That means that it's an active part, the same as in part design. When you add a body in part design, this becomes bold. Let's come over to the part workbench so we don't get confused. So now I can create a link to the part, hold down Alt, and place that in my document. So in here now, in the document, I've got the part which has links to the origin, the cut, inside here, you can see they're all linked objects. What this means is that I've created a link to the container. Anything that's in this container will be pulled through. So any changes to part B, what kind of change should we add to this? Let's add, let's add a torus. And what we'll do is right click, transform, and we'll make a simple union against these. So that's okay that. Pictorus, take the cut and create the union. So we've got that there as a fusion. Notice the fusion is outside the part. So we need to drag and drop that inside the part there. So what's happened to the document? Come into the document and look in the part. We can see the fusion is now in here. So clicking on the document. Well, we've got our linked object, our finished design. Any modifications that happens in part B will be reflected back to our document here. So if I wanted to create a technical drawing against this, coming over to such things as a tech draw and creating a new tech draw document and then clicking on the part, tech draw, insert view, then when we look at our page, you can see the view has been inserted, this one here. And we can scale this up, change this to custom and scale this up. And it needs refreshing, so control R. So there we go, that's a bit too big, but we get the idea. And we do a refresh on that. So we've got our technical drawing here. And we'll save all, yes. So we're building a document here with a tech draw part in there as a link. So if I come into part B and change that, let's come into the fusion and say, I didn't want the torus in there. So click on the fusion, hit delete, and click on the torus, hit delete. So we've just got this now. When I come into the document, edit, refresh, then we get our changes reflected back onto our document. So as you can see, we can actually share using that link tool across files, structuring our project as we see fit. We may want parts in one file and pull those into assembly. We may want to build document in another file and pull parts and spreadsheets into that one. The document file I have for the spreadsheet in there is just for reference. We could even control what we have in our project from our documentation as well. In the next video in this series, we'll put that into practice by creating a number of parts and a spreadsheet that's shared across those parts and then use that in an assembly. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.